things are getting quite out of hand. The amounts of branching narratives Ruby is taking is almost becoming too much for the average viewer to handle. Of course, you have the main narrative in the form of this series, and that'll never change. But now you have various mangas, anthologies, that of which are and are not canon, a comic set to release, a book, all of these things of varying canon to the true Ruby storyline. And to add to that ever-growing pile is the Shonen Jump adaptation written by Bunta Kinami. Probably not how you pronounce that. I'm sure most of you didn't know this even existed, and to be fair, it's still relatively new. The adaptation was announced on October 6, 2018, and made its official release the following month on November 26th of that same year. Chapters are released monthly for free to the public, and at the time of this recording, only three chapters are out. So it's not like I'm expecting everyone to know about it. And despite my feelings towards Volume 6 and how I do actually believe the majority of it was good, I'm still left with an empty feeling by the end of it. It feels wrong, almost like I don't care. It doesn't feel like Ruby has a story to tell, rather I'm watching it just make up a story as it goes along. The amount of plot holes and retcons just keep piling up, so I just see a show that's constantly trying to fix what it messed up in the past and my faith in the series has wavered. Yet with the aforementioned Shonen Jump manga, I already see it as better than the show itself. You see, it's not a direct adaptation doing exactly beat for beat what the show did prior, but it's doing enough differently that it's noticeable and in my opinion, often for the better. What do I mean by this? Well, let me compare the show to what we have in the manga so far so you can see for yourself and get a sense of what I'm talking about. For example, during Roman's dust robbery when he retreats onto the airship, in the show Glinda of course shows up and her and Cinder have a bit of an air battle. Yet in the manga, Cinder doesn't even make an appearance, not even on a single frame. Glinda is of course there to try and stop Roman, but there is no fight, there is no Cinder and Roman gets flown away. Speaking of Roman, there's a lot of charm that he has in this series that the manga doesn't translate well with. Yet he's given an amount of characterization here that the show never gave or built him up in having. All there was was a single news report that described him as nefarious, which is just a criminal. The robbery was led by nefarious criminal Roman Torchwick, who continues to evade authorities. If you have any information on his whereabouts, please contact the Vale Police Department. Yang is proud of her sister, yet for no discernible reason other than she's her sister. But I'm so proud of you! Billy says it was nothing. What do you mean? It was incredible! Everyone at Beacon is gonna think you're the bee's knees! Yet in the manga, Yang knows Roman by name and reputation, not describing him as nefarious, rather vicious, and labeling him as the most dangerous dude in Vale. And it's for that reason that she's proud and impressed by her sister for taking him head on. And even Glinda adding to Roman's reputation, even stating that they've been unable to prevent his crimes. Roman may lack his charm, but he's given much more of a reputation in the manga that to me, it's worth the trade. When watching the series, I never saw Roman as a serious villain. He always seemed to be in over his head and just a generic criminal. But here he's got a reputation in Vale, the criminal. And so immediately, Roman has a much better setup than the series gave. And going back to that scene with Ozpin and Glinda, once again, many differences. There's not a single mention of her silver eyes by Ozpin, not a single mention of Crow, which was a huge topic of conversation in the series for whatever reason. But here, he's not even alluded to. And right out of the gate, when asked why she wants to go to Beacon, there is of course all the things like its reputation. But she also brings up how her parents went to Beacon. In the show, Yang sounds like it's the reason she wants to go. She does bring up her parents, but only saying how they taught them to help others. In fact, take a listen to the whole ramblings of why she wants to become a huntress. See, my sister's starting there this year, and she's trying to become a huntress, and I'm trying to become a huntress because I want to help people. My parents always taught us to help others, so I thought, oh, I might as well make a career out of it. <laughs> I mean, the police are all right, but huntsmen and huntresses are just so much more romantic and exciting and cool. Just, yeah, uh, you know? It's extremely glossed over and paid no attention to, going for a more comedic tone when asked what is a defining question for her character. But in the manga, it's posed as almost a completely philosophical question that's left unanswered until the end of the chapter at the dance hall. 
why does Ruby want to become a huntress? And that's sort of the key thing. It asks the question, why? Why would Ruby want to be a guardian of the world? Why would she want to battle dangerous monsters many wouldn't? And you're left with that thought as the rest of the chapter plays out. Now in the series, it's almost a very similar conclusion, but the difference is you weren't posed with the question earlier on. Instead, Blake just outright asks Ruby why it is she wants to become a huntress. And yet, the moment is kind of stale. Yes, she talks about the stories she's heard and wanting to be just like them, but it's in a very casual conversation. They're one of the reasons I want to be a huntress. <laughs> why is that? Hoping you'll live happily ever after? Well, I'm hoping we all will. As a girl, I wanted to be just like those heroes in the books, as someone who fought for what was right and who protected people who couldn't protect themselves. Once again, this is a defining question for Ruby's whole character motivation. In the manga, the difference here is that Weiss is there berating Ruby, calling her a child, calling her dim-witted, saying how she entered the academy with no greater goals, just simply making fun of her and belittling her, and Ruby is instead given an empowering moment where despite being this shy and awkward girl who doesn't really know how to socialize well, tells off this girl is being mean to her, saying how she doesn't care what others think of her because she knows what she wants to be. And it's there that the question Ozpin posed to her is revealed, that she wants to be like the heroes in the stories. It's a very empowering moment. She's embarrassed right after, but you can tell that she spoke from the heart. That comparatively is much better than how the series did it. Yes, she's still relatively shy and awkward, but not nearly to the extent she is in the show. In fact, it's often self-deprecating. She'll doubt herself and her resolve, which is something she's never done in the series. And before I go any further, I need to talk about Weiss. Now, not much is different in regards to her character. We all know the one word to describe her in the early volumes. Say it with me, bitch. There's no shame in saying it. She was an extremely hated character by the audience because the show only painted her as this stuck-up bratty princess. Now, like I said, not much is different. She still is extremely that. But the key difference here is that she doesn't only do that. It shows that there's more to her than what's presented at face value. In the show, she mildly annoys Ruby, and then Blake comes in. Uh, you complete dolt! What are you even doing here? Aren't you a little young to be attending Beacon? Well, I... I... <laughs> this isn't your ordinary combat school. It's not just sparring and practice, you know. We're here to fight monsters, so watch where you're going! Hey, I said I was sorry, princess. It's Eris, actually. Here, she annoys Ruby enough to the point where she insults her back, saying how she's not a proud huntsman and someone like her could never cut it as an actual huntress. And we get this just chilling still of Weiss as she dares Ruby to say it again. That alone shows how strong her resolve is despite her personality. Yeah, she might be a bit bratty, but she's taking being a huntress seriously. Something the show never exactly alluded to. More or less the stories of Jean, Pira, and Blake remain exactly as they were at this point in the show. Another change that I really like took place in the Emerald Forest when everyone was finding partners. As events played out, they all landed and Weiss comes across Ruby only to choose against partnering with her. She then also comes across Jean, which she also refuses. In the show, she goes back to Ruby. It's a comedic moment once again, but the manga doesn't go for that. Weiss is instead angrily striving for perfection. She must have the perfect partner if she herself is going to be perfect, not willing to settle for less, holding herself to an impossible standard which she even doubts. While alone in the woods, she is ambushed by an Ursa which she is more than confident in taking on, but in the process of preparing to attack, she is ambushed by a different Ursa which she acknowledges is likely going to kill her. This is where Ruby swoops in to save her life, not only proving something to Weiss, but proving something to herself as well. Part of Ruby's resolve is helping others and just because she doesn't really like Weiss doesn't mean she can just not help and this is sort of the stepping stone in these two's newfound friendship. Because despite Weiss still wanting to part ways after this, once they reach the relics and the Deathstalker almost kills Ruby, Weiss returns the favor saving her life now acknowledging that they are a pair. In the show they sort of just become a pair for comedic relief. Ruby tries extensively to show off to a point where she straight up abandons her in the forest where she is ambushed in the first place. 
but the difference is that the manga it makes sense why she's alone. And after fighting, Weiss doesn't want anything to do with Ruby. Once again, a lot of the beats still play out exactly as they did from the Nevermore ride, etc. And even Ren and Nora make their debut in the manga coming in on the Ursa. And once again, as much as I like Ren and Nora, I think this was for the better because they are indeed side characters and not as much time is spent focusing on them. The main show always tried to get away with moments by making them comedic. It never 100% took itself seriously. And I honestly think that hindered certain characters like Weiss. But the manga, I think, makes certain aspects of the story serious because it works better that way. It does a better job at setting up and introducing and establishing our characters. Now obviously one of the biggest downsides to the manga that does not and likely will never hold a candle to the series is the action. There's no denying it, the action in the series will always be better than anything the manga is capable of doing. It's one of the few downsides that I see, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a trade-off that I'm happy with. We're not even halfway through season 1 in the manga, yet in my opinion, it's done a much greater job at establishing characters like Ruby, Roman, and Weiss. As we all know, Yang doesn't exactly have a story until Volume 3, and Blake's begins towards the end of season 1. But why? Why is this seemingly already better than what Volume 1 did? You see, in my eyes, it's because the structure has already been laid out in the form of the series. I talked about how it felt like the show's just making up its story season by season, yet with the manga, it's already got the rough draft that is the show. Typically what happens is the reverse. When it comes to many anime, they start out as a manga and then eventually get turned into an anime. So what the show will have to do is use the already established story as a guideline they can either follow or choose to diverge from. Even in western culture, the same thing happens, whether it be shows or movies. Yet Ruby is such a fundamentally flawed series because it's failed to do some of the most basic things. So the manga already knows large chunks of the story and it can choose to directly follow it or change it altogether. And I'm not blaming Monty for not creating a manga first. Obvious circumstances were obvious. Monty came up with the show and he was a fight animator. You can't animate fights if they're in pictures. And that was one of, if not the biggest draw going into the series when it first came out. But as time has gone on, the roles have reversed. The story and the characters are more interesting, while the action is more for eye candy. Now of course, only time will tell if the manga does in fact change major details. In reality, it doesn't have to, but it needs to earn the moments that happen. Faunus discrimination, grim, character motives, backstory. Nothing Ruby has done is bad just in and of its concept, but it's its failure to earn up or build up certain traits that is its flaw. Even religion, Pyrrha brings up the gods and how humanity was gifted dust. That's just straight up religion, believing that some greater being was kind enough to gift you something. It's not just some out of nowhere, oh by the way, it's correctly foreshadowing its story through the beliefs the world has because it knows what the story is. Even Ruby as a main character isn't fundamentally a bad character. Yes, people have always been complaining about her and not having development and she's always optimistic and that's not just a bad character. That's called a flat character arc. You see, there are three types of character arcs. A positive character arc where the character changes for the better, a negative character arc where the character changes for the worse, and a flat character arc where the character doesn't change at all. And Ruby can remain that type of character. It's not a very well received arc as many audiences see it as incredibly boring. Often audiences want a positive character arc. They want to see Weiss become independent and break free from her family name. They want to see Blake get over Adam and overcome her fondest discrimination. Whereas with Ruby, she's not meant to change. The flat character is meant to change those around them by having her what is known as truth affect everyone. Weiss might be a bitch, yet it's Ruby's kindness and optimism that changes her entire outlook on how to treat and trust others. That's the effect of the flat character. It's ideal for long-running series because the arc just never ends. But the problem with how the series has handled it is that she often does not affect anyone. Sure, Weiss can be lumped in and even now Crow, but characters like Blake, Yang, Jean, Ren, Nora, She's hardly had any effect on them or the world she lives in because she's so often been sidelined. 
But for the manga to fix that, all it has to do is have her be the forefront of the series and have her outlook and optimism truly affect those she interacts with. Now the flat character is kind of hated a lot. One of the most annoying things about a flat character is that they're never wrong. No matter what happens, they will always be in the right because it's their belief about justice and peace or whatever it may be. And it's annoying. And it annoys me. And so the audience will often push for that positive character arc. They want to see Ruby break down, be unsure of herself, fail in life. But to then rise up above it and overcome the obstacles, make mistakes, learn from them, and become a better and stronger person because of it. And the manga could honestly go either way with it. She's already been shown doubting herself, which the series never did. So whether or not she is going to have a flat character arc or a positive character arc, only time will tell. Now obviously we're barely halfway through season 1, so to say that this is definitively better would be foolish. Blake's story hasn't had the opportunity to play out and Yang's hasn't either. This manga doesn't need to drastically change events as we know them. Beacon can still fall, Adam can still cut off Yang's arm, Yang can still have PTSD, or perhaps it does wish to have a different series of events for the manga. Personally, I'd be down for change. But the story still has a long way to go before we reach any significant events. Volume 1 is really meant to introduce us to the characters and the world and provide motives for everyone. And in my honest opinion, the manga has already done a much better job in the grand scheme of things. I don't know what it was about the last volume of Ruby, but I'm not exactly excited for what's to come. Now that can, of course, change. Perhaps in a few months I'll be as hyped as ever to get into Volume 7. But right now I'm left feeling apathetic to it. However, despite knowing the story of Ruby and how events are meant to play out, that spark of interest I've found inside this Shonen Jump adaptation. Perhaps it's this chance at redemption, so to speak, that I'm feeling. The opportunity to do it right and correctly build up to everything. I don't know. But the most faith that I've had for Ruby lies right here. And I would recommend that you all go out and support this manga.